As spirit-filled believers, most of us know what it means to pray through, to break through. We know what it means, and it's an incredible thing. We're washed by the Spirit. We feel clean. We feel renewed. We feel saved. Not that you have to feel saved to be saved, but we feel close to the Lord. Our sins are washed away. All the offenses are gone. We love everybody. We forgive everybody. We have a renewed purpose. God speaks some things into our spirit, into our life. We have clarity of mind. We have prayed through. We want to do right. We're so glad to be there. We tell everybody, I'll never be the same. It's a big public display. They know you prayed through. They know that old man died. We witnessed a public death. We are prayed through. It's all good. Sunshine and rainbows everywhere. Love is in the air. Heaven on earth. I won't go back. Can't go back. And we're just, oh, it's all good. And then we go home and we go to sleep. And then Monday comes. Traffic comes. Kids fighting. Co-worker. Bills. By Thursday, we're being pretty snappy. And by Friday, we don't really feel saved. We're wondering, what was I so excited about on Sunday? And then Saturday, you're wondering if you should go to your buddy's lake house or come to church. How did this happen? Sunday, you're walking in glory land. And Saturday, church, weekend getaway, sleep late, watch the game. Hello? What? Did, woo! Rewind. I think we have an epidemic of bipolar Christianity. I do. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Sick of it. It's time, it's high time that we get off the roller coaster and get our feet on solid ground and start to grow, start to become overcomers, start to take territory. And I don't mean take back the same territory that you lost last Sunday. And you give it up, take it back, give it up, take it back, give it up, take it back. Hey, it's time. It's time. Don't have a lot to it. So I'm gonna tell you what I think the problem is. The problem is, 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 is. The problem is that we do not properly value and protect our breakthrough. I'm gonna prove it to you. When you really value something, you protect it. You set up boundaries, safeguards to protect it. I love and I value my children. I don't let them play on I-10 because I don't want them to get hurt. I know that's dangerous. They're precious. Rule, okay? People put their money, their jewelry, their fine things in safety deposit boxes. They put alarms on their cars. They put fences around their homes, locks on their door. Why? Because they know there's something precious inside, and I want to keep intruders out. So it's high time that we put a no trespassing sign, triple bolt locks on the door of our walk with God and set up some things that will help us instead of self-sabotaging us to be who we need to be in God and stop with all the ridiculous games. It's hard. It's so hard living for God. Stop it. It's not hard. If you make it hard and you don't even try, you don't protect anything, then yeah, of course it's hard. But if you actually set yourself up for success and you get a made-up mind, it's easy. In fact, it's incredibly glorious and victorious. It's going to be hard times, but if you set up things to help bump you back in the right direction, it's like when you go bowling. At least when I go bowling, I need the guards to be up. So when I lean this way, oh, it bumps me back. And I go, you know, the ball goes closer to where it needs to be. You need those safeguards. If they're down, gutter ball, and that's right where your life is headed, in the gutter, without some boundaries to keep you on the right track. So all this, I'm free, I don't have to do anything. Well, you know what? Do it. Go for it. Yes, you're free. You can do anything you want to do. No one's got a gun to your head. But if you want to be an overcomer and be successful, you will take responsibility for your walk with God. You will learn to value fences, boundaries, and guidelines. Ones that you set up and the ones that God has placed in your life through your spiritual authority or church that you have 
associated yourself with. It's for your own good. If you gain the whole world with your freedom, but you lose your soul, what do you have? Nothing. Good preaching. Thank you. So, I have ten ways to protect your breakthrough. Now, if you don't want to protect it and you want to do whatever you want to do, then fine. Don't watch this video. Hit stop. But if you do want to learn how to protect what is precious, protect your right mind, your right heart, your right spirit, your future in God, your eternity, and you want to be more than just a fly-by-night, chronic, pray-thrower, you can't have it both ways. You know, you can't. Now, if you just want to go in and get your breakthrough and feel better about yourself and ease your conscience and go about your way and live your life the same way you always have, then that's fine. That's your business. But if you want to change, if you want to set yourself up for success, then you need to do something about it and take action and set up some parameters for your success. Okay, I sound like an annoying commercial telling you all about it. This great product, but I'm not telling you what it is yet. They're not the Ten Commandments. They're not the Ten Be All, whatever. But there are ten things that I feel like if you'll do these ten things, you're not going to backslide every other second. Okay? So, because it's getting long, I'm going to make a separate video. So, calm down. This video is not going to take all ten points. But if you are truly interested in getting over yourself getting serious about this living for God thing, then I've got 10 things that you can do that will help you succeed. So I'm on your side, God's on your side, but it's time that you got on your own side and set yourself up for success. So part two, 